can get started. Okay. Um, so are we going to wait a few minutes before I'll wait like a minute or two to get like everyone in and then we can start um, the class. But anyway, thank you guys for all coming. Okay. Actually, Emily, it looks like almost everyone's in so you can go. Okay, ahead. yeah. Um, so, um, hey everyone. So thank you all for coming today. We're going to talk about note taking with zebra pen and I'll be going the, like step by step. So like I'll do a bit of an introduction. So if you guys don't know me, my name is Emily and I have like a YouTube and Instagram channel where I post all about note taking and I can help you guys like improve your notes and make them more organized and you guys can learn better. So first I'm just gonna like give an overview of what we're gonna be discussing today. I'll be like, I'll be taking notes since like note taking is a personal process. You guys can take notes along with me and I'll be like giving you lots of tips along the way. And so we'll be talking about like supplies and then like different note taking styles. And then I'll be taking my own notes and you guys can follow along too with yours. And we're gonna go through like a bunch of different techniques and tips about that. So let's get into the class. Um, first, we're going to start off with talking about all the supplies. So I'm going to highlight. So you guys can all see my hands right here. I'm going to start with, wait, I'll turn off this video. Okay, so you guys can all see my hands right here. And we're going to be talking about the different supplies we have. So first up, we have the Zebra Mild Liner Highlighters. Everything I mentioned today is definitely optional to have, although it'll definitely help today. You can get everything at Michael's in the store or online. So first we have, wait, um, let's see. Okay, so first we have the Zebra Mod Liner Highlighters. These come with 25 different colors and you can also buy them in sets of five. They're basically, soft colored highlighters. So I'll show you guys an example. They, oh, if you guys wanna close the transcript at the bottom, like right here, there's a little button at the bottom that says closed captioning too. Okay, so first we have the Zebra Mod Liner Highlighters and they come with like 25 different colors as I mentioned. And they first have like this chisel tip which is really thick and you use this part to highlight mostly. And then the other side, you have a thinner tip and I like to use this for like outlining and circling everything. It really helps with like doing it. There's a lot of flexibility with the zebra bald liners and you can do a lot with them. So the next item I'll be talking about is the Zebra Sarasa Clip Gel Pens. These are my absolute favorite gel pens because I've been using them for like years and they're also really smooth. The black one is my favorite and I use this one to write all my notes basically because the ink is just, it flows across the page basically. Plus you have all these other different colors along with it. So you have like all the colors of the rainbow and you can also get this at their stores. And then the next item I'll be using for today are the Zebra Mild Liner brush pens. These are sort of newer, they came out recently, but if you haven't got a hand on these, these are basically like the Zebra Mild Liner highlighters, except they have, like they come in a brush pen. So for example, they have like this thicker tip and it's super flexible. And this one's a really great, brush pen for beginners mainly because there's a lot you can do with it and the pen isn't too stiff so if you're new to it it's definitely great to start out and on the other side they have like a super thin tip and this one allows you to make finer details with everything and it's like it's like the thicker part for example here is a zebra mild liner highlighter and they have a more like you can compare the tips they have it more thicker so this one's very like pointed anyway so let me put these away
And so you can also supplies, you can also have different types of paper. So next I'm going to be going through like the pros and cons of paper there. They have like, I have like a bunch of loose leaf papers. Here are the templates you guys could have printed out if you wanted to. They're definitely optional, but I'm going to be using them a bit throughout the video. So if you are curious, you can find them on the zebra pen website and the Michaels page where you got you signed up for this. So here's just the templates and I also so I'm going to be going through basically the difference between the using a notebook or loose leaf paper and like what's best for you what may or may not work. So in this video I'll be using like a mixture of like loose leaf and notebooks. For example, here are notebooks and they're a lot different so if you guys are like on the edge about deciding whether or not you want to take notes on like this or this, I'll be going through some pros and cons. So for notebooks, I really like these because they keep everything all in one place and they allow you to like carry it around and like have one subject, everything. You can choose different types of paper. Like it's sort of limited. This one's only grid. And you can't really like interchange between like lined or like DAW or or like other blank paper, but the notebooks allow you to do like a lot inside and they have like a hundred pages. So like you usually never run out. And I personally use these a lot, but I find like the spine can be quite annoying because you know, it can get in the way of your hands, but they're still really nice. However, loose leaf paper, on the other hand, like this, it allows a lot more flexibility in like a binder, let's say. So for example, here is the binder I have. It's like a bit different. It has like two rings, which may be like, you have to have like a special hole puncher, but it's like the same thing. Basically, I use binders to a lot and I created these tabs with like washi tape so I can like organize and flip to things more quickly and easier. But anyway, I like these because you can like put in different pieces of paper. I can put in like a lined piece of paper here. And then let's say the next time I want to use grid, I can put it in here. And these are also Cornell paper. So I'll be getting into that a bit after about how to use them to the best ability. But anyway, I do like these because I usually have like all like some handouts inside of them and then like some rough notes too and I keep my homework in them but they also can be like a bit heavier and bulky because you're carrying around like a full notebook which is like a lot I guess I mean like a binder but you can also keep multiple subjects inside as I mentioned with the tabs because they have like you can flip to like different pages and like different subjects inside. So it really depends on like your personal preferences, what to use if you want a notebook or a binder. But anyway, so next I'm gonna be getting into the different styles of note taking and how you can use these to the best of your ability and like different tips and tricks I like. So I'll first start out with so I'm first going to start out with talking about the outline method and then I'm going to get it into Cornell notes and then mind mapping and then like I'll be talking about the pros and cons of each inside this. So first I'll be So first style of note taking is the outline method. So you guys don't have to take notes. I'm just like showing you how to like do it. You can if you want, but I'm just gonna show you the general layout. So usually you have a title at the top in here. This is like where you put your notes. And generally you it follows like a simple structure with bullet points. So you have like here, you can put like point one and like whatever you want. And then these are like your main points. So point one is going to go here and then we like to indent it. So you can put like a sub point here. And then you can like do another point 
it's pretty simple and easy. I think a lot of us do this technique when we take notes. It's just like what we're taught in school and what we do in our daily lives. And you can also have like headings here. So like you can be a bit smaller. And then you can put another point. You don't have to follow like the necessary hierarchy. It's just, it's very free flowing and simple. It allows you to see the relationships between like each topics in the nice hierarchy with indented points. I like taking this a lot. You'll see this in most of my notes because it's just like easy to do and it comes pretty quick. Like here, you can see, I just follow this simple pattern with like dots and bullet points. And I like using this in like lectures because it just lets you, you know, follow everything easily. We're not going to get confused about how to do it. So the next one I'm going to be talking about is the Cornell method. And these are the printed pages. Right here. So you guys didn't have to print them, but I'm just going to like show you just in case like you want a template that easily outlines everything. So the Cornell method was like introduced in the 1940s in at Cornell University, as the name suggests. And it's like this note taking style that's really good for lectures and active recall. And if you aren't really sure what active recall is, it's basically asking yourself questions to keep yourself stimulated and like, so you know what's going on because by asking yourself questions, you can say like, oh, I know what's going on. And now you know what's going on. And now you can like be able to like follow along, I guess more better. Let me get a sip of water before I continue. <laughs> so. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with like the main hierarchy structure. I'll choose a different color. It starts out with the title at the top. And then here is where you put your questions or I like to call them cues. And cues encompass, as I said, questions. They also, you can also put like keywords inside of the, here. And just like things you need to remember about it, like important topics, not like the entire sentence, because it's pretty small. It's like the margin. And on this side is where you put your summary. And the summary basically follows the Cornell method. So no, I mean, the outline method I was discussing earlier. So you have like, let's say a heading here. Let me just underline this part. You can have your heading and then you have your point one. And then you have your like sub point. And then you have point two, let's say, yeah, it keeps on going on and on. But basically, once you finish your notes for that time, we can move on to the bottom. And this part is the, wait, sorry, I meant to put outline right here. Sorry. This is where your summary goes. And basically, you summarize everything in here in like one to two sentences. This helps so you can encapsulate everything you put here in just like quick. And basically, so when you like flip through your notes, let's say a week later, you don't have to read all of this. You can just quickly read through here. And then you can say, oh, and then you also have your cues on the side. So it has all your questions. And basically, this is just really good for reviewing things later on, because in the outline method, as I mentioned, you're going to have to read through everything, which can be like a bit of work. So instead, this just quickly summarizes everything. Plus, I really like the summary at the end, because if you can't summarize everything in here, 
you didn't absorb a lot of information, so you should probably look it over and it's just a good recall and learning strategy. So just to make, so of course you don't have to like have these templates. You can just use a normal piece of paper as we had before. And you can just like split up your page like this. So it's like this. So you don't have to print it out if you don't want to. Okay. So next we're gonna move on to the last note-taking method, which is mind mapping. Now, of course you don't like, mind mapping is like, it may seem a bit weird and you may have never heard of it, but basically mind mapping allows you really good review. It's a really good review technique for like encapsulating everything. So you like start with your title in the middle or it could be like at the top anywhere and you'll want to branch out here. So for example, and you just branch out everywhere. So let's say here and here. So you can just branch out everything and let's say there's like a point right here and it's somehow related to this. You can draw your arrows and personally I've done this in like class before, but it can get a bit like busy because you don't know how many topics there are going to be and it may be like confusing because they might be going too fast and you might be cramped for space, let's say. So this is definitely something you do like at home where you can like review it, like plan out the topics, plan out what you're gonna say. And it just makes like a good review thing. I like doing this when I'm like studying for a test, let's say, and I just do like a brain dump, which is basically just writing down everything I know about a certain topic. And like, I just summarize it myself basically. So of course there are other review techniques you guys can do for like note-taking. Um, I just mentioned the outline Cornell and mind mapping today, but there are tons of other ones. For example, the table method or like flow charts, which are similar to mind maps. There are a lot of others. So anyway, next I'm going to be talking about how to take notes and you guys can see like my before, during and after processes and like what I do to take them. So I'll get that set. So as we have tons of colors in the mod liner scheme, I'm going to be talking about like what I do before I start taking notes, like how I set up everything. So let me put this back. So before I, the first thing I do is choose a color scheme. As with the zebra mod liners, they come with like tons of colors right here. And if you can guys, if you guys can see right here, they're each a set. So for example, the worm set is the first five of these. And then the next five are the cool set. And then the next are the fluorescent set. You get it? So before I start my notes, I like to maybe like choose a color scheme. I like sticking with like colors that go together. For example, all the cool colors could be like these ones. And this makes a really nice color. Or you can go with like the other side with like warm colors. For example, like orange, reds, and like yellows, like this. Or if you guys have like only like a certain mod liner pack, you can use all five of these. But the importance of color coding is to like make sure all your information lines up and I'll be getting about like that, how to create a color, like how to properly highlight afterwards. Like that's my like my afterwards process. But so I'm just going to choose a color scheme. For example, I'll just go with all the all the warm colors.
And you guys can also, with the Zebra Sarasa clip, choose warm colors too. They have like all 20 of them. They match with them. So for example, like these blues are the same. These two are the same. So I'll grab some warm colored pens like these ones. And they all go together really nicely. And I'll just leave them right here. Wait. Okay, so once we chose our color scheme, we're gonna have our notes here. And I'll use the I'll use a template for here. And you want to start off with like title ideas. So I'm going to give you guys some title ideas to start off with everything. It really helps to like show like your notes. For example, in my notes, my title always stands out like here or like here. They always stand out a lot, mainly because if you want to like flip through everything, you can see it like clearly and be like, oh, this is like here. And you can find all your notes really fast. And plus it makes it like more fun, the process. Cause note taking, I guess, can be like a strenuous process that we might not all look forward to, but when you make it fun and interesting, I guess you're more likely to study. I found this worked a lot for me before when I wasn't really inclined to studying. I took really boring notes and I just like hated it. But once I started like incorporating color and like highlighters, it became a lot more fun and the process just became easier. So I'll be giving you guys some title ideas that are pretty easy. I'll start off with like the easy ones and then I'll get into something like a bit progressively harder if you guys want to try that out. So for example, title ideas, you can have like this one. You can just like, this is a pretty simple title. It didn't take me too long. There are also other ideas, for example, like this. You can do a wave. You could also do something like this. and then color that in, or you could take like a pen like this one and then just go through it with cursive. Like this, and it's pretty simple. So now I'm gonna get into like a bit more complex things. I'm gonna be telling you guys how to drop shadow which I use to create like those fancy titles you see over here. Here I just made like pretty simple ones just to start. They're like rushed if you don't have much time. So now I'll be guys showing you guys how to drop shadow. And if you guys really aren't aware of what that is, I'll show you an example on my notes. Let's say like, right here you can see how you have your letters and then this like gray outline so this is what i'll be telling you guys how to do it took me a bit of time to learn how to do this but i'm just going to give you guys like a really quick tutorial okay so first i start off with like the letter that's do like, hello. I'll, I'll keep it simple, hey. And we can color this in. Like this, so Let's drop shadow it with a darker color for contrast. So for example, 
we can take a gray. And the trick to doing this is you have to imagine the letter and then like shift it. So for example, you can take this and you can move it down a bit. So if you guys don't really understand that, let's say for example here, we shifted this letter down a little bit. You can see how cool it looks. So you just put it diagonally that way. So this side, we can start here. And since we're moving it down there, we do here. So it looks like really cool. It looks 3D almost. That's basically what the drop shadow does is it like pops it out. So here, since we were going to shift it down this way, we're going to draw it in this direction. Now you might not know, you could do like a drop shadow in different directions, but for simplicity, we're going to do it like you take the letter and you move it down a little bit. Like that, basically. So next, I'm going to be talking about titles with the brush pens. So these ones are really cool and they're super smooth and they're basically like my favorite brush pen out there. So let's do another word, for example, like notes. So the trick to using this is using pressure. So when I use these, you have to like put a lot of pressure when you go down and then no pressure, almost nothing when you go up to get a thin stroke like that. So you put a lot of pressure, you angle it on the side like this basically, and you just like pressure down and then no pressure on the way up and pressure a lot down and then basically a lot. And so that's how you create like the good contrast like that basically. And if you really want to like take this up a notch or a level, we can do this thing where like you ombre the title. So if you don't know what, like a gradient. So if you take like red at the top, I just have like a red mild liner here. I'm just going to color in the top to show you guys how to ombre it. And this makes like a really cool and interesting title. I'm always asked how to do this. So here's our little tutorial, I guess. And in between red and yellow is orange. So I have the orange mud liner here. Basically, it looks really cool now and it's like all the way down. And if you even want to blend it a little bit more, you can just add a bit of the yellow to look like this. Ta-da! So that's, these are our more interesting and harder titles. And this is like the first thing I do when I take notes. So we're gonna put it into place here. So. I'm going to be taking notes about like the digestive system, mainly because I study a lot of biology and this is what I mainly take notes on. We can do something pretty simple, like we can incorporate what we've learned. So for example, yeah. I'm using the chisel tip side of the mild liner to get like that more thicker stroke. You guys can follow along too if you have your own notes and like write along with me. And I'm gonna like mix it up and put like another interesting title. I'll use a different pen, I guess. And I'll use like cursive.
and I created a really cool title. You guys can do like the drop shadow. Another really cool thing you guys can do is like outlining the letters with a pen. So for example, here I have the regular Zebra Sarasa clip gel pen. And I'm just outlining everything like this. Okay, so once I finish that, we're gonna move on to like what I do during the process. So I'm gonna be giving you guys like, um, when you take notes during a, like you have like bullet points. So I'm gonna be talking about like bullet points and how to take the best advantage of them. Oh, if you want to see the titles I created here. So I'll put these to the side. Anyway, so bullet points, I usually start out with like a dot. So right here, mine's a bit smaller, of course, but so you guys can see it here. And then I write point. And when I want to indent the point, I go here. I use like a little, I don't know, greater than sign. It's just like a little arrow basically, and I say sub point. And if I want to even go like another sub sub point, I'll put here, we'll put like information. But this is personally just how I like to do my notes. It can really vary for like your personal needs. For example, you could use like arrows to write your points or like dashes, like really long dashes. Or you could use like a star and like color that in. Or you can use like circles, a giant circle. And the circle is pretty cool because I like to do, if I'm taking notes and like, I have to like check off that I review the notes and concepts, I like circle it in after I finish reviewing. So if we have like a bunch of circles here of like notes when you're taking and you have to review them, I don't know, a week later to make sure you like remember each point, you can color it in like that basically. So anyway, once we finish the bullet points, we can move on to handwriting. So I know a lot of people always ask me, how do I get nice handwriting? How do I improve upon this? So I'm gonna be giving you guys some quick tips. Of course, like when you're taking notes in your own time, you can have a lot neater handwriting, but if you're like in a rush and you have to like get things done, here are just some handwriting tips. So first, I, of course, use abbreviations when I write, for example, really long words that you have to keep on writing again and again. For example, like the word and. So the word and if you we write that a lot, you can use the word you can use this. I forget what the name is called, but it's like the little I don't know. I forget. But this little thing. Or for example, if you use the word a lot because, that's a good word. No, I mean, sorry. Because, you can turn that into because, like a B and a dash C. Or if you use the word with a lot, you can change that into the word W with a dash. And for symbols too, for example, if you use the word increasing a lot, which is really long to write, you can just use an arrow pointing up. This shows like increasing. Same with like decreasing. You can use the down arrow. And I like, for example, if I'm showing something that caused, for example, a cause, I would like to use this arrow, like something caused this. 
I use like the arrow to show everything. When you write it, when you take notes, it really doesn't have to make sense what you're saying because you're the only one who's gonna be looking at it. So as long as you guys can understand it, you'll be good. And if you made up a bunch of like words, like, and like abbreviations, you might not remember them. So I sometimes have a sticky note and then I just like paste it on the side. I'll get one right here. For example, I like put a sticky note and you can write like all your terms you made up because sometimes I forget them and then I'm just staring at my notes wondering what they mean. So you can just put them on a sticky note on the side and be like this equals, yeah. Okay, so next for my handwriting tips is using grid or lined paper. I see sometimes people using blank paper or like dot paper. I'm personally not a huge fan of those because you can't have like spacing and no line. I typically, when I write, I like to write directly touching the line. And making sure all the letters like are at the base because if I write, let's say in the middle, it's, it's a bit, you know, like this isn't all at the same and it can look a bit messier. And especially when you're in a rush and let's say your handwriting doesn't look the best, it can be a bit like harder to read. And I'm not personally a big fan of that. So this is, I always touch the line. Next is like writing a bit smaller. For example, if you write big for like this, It's a bit harder to like write really fast at that. Whereas you like, if you're writing smaller, you're allowed to like write a bit more. And another technique I like to use is slanting your handwriting. For example, if I write straight up, all the letters are like going this way. Whereas if you write, write, writing slanted to let's say this direction, it allows you to like write a lot faster. And I know this, like when I'm in a rush, I'll, I'll write like this too. And so my next one, I'm gonna be talking about drawing diagrams. During note-taking, a lot of like concepts could be confusing and you might not know what's going on a lot. And I find that when stuff is complicated, I really enjoy drawing diagrams. And I'm really giving you guys my tips and tricks on how I do this and how I draw really nice ones. For example, in my notes, I'll flip to a page. Like, I don't have much like, like, let's say like this, something like this, or I don't have as much in like simple ones too more like detailed ones. I guess I have more in my other notebook, but this is the one we have here. Okay, so I'm gonna be giving you guys like a step-by-step -step tutorial on what I do. So I'll be like doing it like, I'll be doing like the sketch. I'll actually do the sketch on the notes. So I'm gonna be drawing like the digestive system. So this is like, I'll take my pencil and I'll first start out with like a sketch. Usually I don't go directly to pen because I probably mess up. That's like, that's like pretty normal of me. So I start with like, I'm gonna like have notes up here. So I'll draw it somewhere in the middle. Uh, this one doesn't, I'll get a pencil. Okay, so I draw, I'll just start off with like, like arms and then since I'm doing the digestive system, I'm just gonna draw like a person here. It's like really just like sketch sketch it out. It's okay if it like doesn't look that great to begin with because you can always touch things up a bit later. And then 
usually I get my diagram inspiration either from my textbook or the internet because that's like where all the diagrams are, but like wherever you guys are, you guys can like look on the internet and find something that you want to draw out. So let me, this is a really rough sketch. Usually it would take me a bit more time, but like since we're like a bit short on time here, I'm gonna try to like make this pretty quick. just like drawing things. Make sure you have your eraser handy just in case things don't go as planned. Currently, I'm just like referencing a picture from the internet that I just found earlier today and just making it super quick. Yeah, okay. So it might not seem like a lot, but once I like outline things, and erase it, you guys will see how it's starting to come out. I'll take the Zebra Sarasa pen and I'll go in and like outline it. So we'll start here. You guys can be drawing along with any diagrams you want. So we can go through the process together. And the Zebra Sarasa gel pens are waterproof. So you can go in and like draw and they won't smudge that much, which is really good too. It's been like my go-to pen since like a, a long time, mainly because of how smooth it is. And it just is really easy to go along. And you can got, you guys can find them at Michael's. They sell them at a lot of other stores too, but it's like, my favorite all time pen. I always get asked this question. So once I finish that, so we're gonna take an eraser and then just erase all the pencil marks from our sketch. and then maybe like touch things up a bit to make it more clear. And then, anyway, so here was my best attempt at like quickly drawing a diagram. So once I do that, I'll usually color it in. I'm gonna take the mild liners and just like quickly go in. They have the chisel tip, so it's really quick and easy to draw with it. You guys can also, they have, they have two ends depending on like how big your diagram is, let's say. And then I'll take the orange. Anyway, so once I finish drawing this, I'll want to go in and label everything. For example, this is my attempt at a, at a stomach and then just drawing like a quick line. And then So once I finish this, I'll like add some depth and final touches. For example, you can add some shadows along the way. If you just like take the edge and go along it, it makes it have like a more 3D effect. For example, here, if we just like go along here, it makes it look, it makes it like pop out and it seems more realistic in 3D. Like this, sorta. Of. 
And so once I finish that, I'll like take the notes. We might not have enough time today to like do this, but basically I'll like start like with like my thinking process when I take notes. So I always ask myself questions. I like like in the Cornell method, except this is the outline method we're doing today. And so like we have to ask ourselves questions. What is the digestive system or like your title? And usually when I do this from a textbook, I like to look at the information and like follow the flow of it, but also go my own way. For example, this is like the breaking down of food. And so you might be wondering like what is being broken down? For example, like carbohydrates. This is sort of like my mind map meets outline method meets like it's just like a bunch of different note taking styles when you note take you want to avoid like um just going off of nothing and just copying down everything verbatim because this really doesn't help and oftentimes i notice i'm doing this so i like to keep myself you know well informed and like keeping active when I take notes or else everything's just going to go in one ear and out the other. So I say like, oh, what does it break down into? And I keep on like going down similar, like my mind map, we're just going to like break things down and like use a bunch of arrows to relate things to each other so we can have clearer ideas. And this gets broken down. example like this and then like I continually have to ask myself like the question so like what is happening and like so these keep on getting broken down and like where are they getting broken down and this is finally where my diagram comes in use and I can be like with different colored pens I can say for example like it gets broken down in here and this, they all get broken down and just keep on using arrows. Oops. Just to like show processes and along the sides you can get, you can keep, you can write down like what's happening. Like this, sort of. And on the side, you can also take notes. For example, we can use some of the title ideas we were talking about earlier and label like we can talk about the steps, like anything you can add descriptions of what's happening. We want to keep like regularly engaged. We just want to avoid like autopilot where we're just taking notes for the sake of it. This is like to keep us engaged and well aware of what's going on. And you guys can write like a little blurb, but since we're kind of running short on time, I want to keep this under an hour. We're going to And like here, you just like write your notes even at the bottom too. And it's pretty quick and easy. And for example, once we finish this, we take our notes, like we know what's going on. We're gonna move on to highlighting tips. So at the end, I don't like highlighting during everything because it can get confusing using all these different colors, but this is where it like finally comes in use. We can like take our highlighter and go over the important things. So for example, here, you can go down here and the zebra sarasa is pretty good because they don't smudge that much when you write over them. But anyway, we want to like keep everything in a hierarchy, as I said. So we'll like highlight all the things on the same level. So it looks colorful and like we can easily, when we come back to it like a week later, we can easily see all the, 
all the hierarchy and everything that's going on. So when I color code, I always stick to the system. For example, in like this one, we, we put like the description in this color, but like when I take more like general notes, I like to keep, let's say this color, we can put for like descriptions and definitions. And then this one for key terms and we like to keep it all the same or like this color we can say i'll come back to it later but we don't want to like if you have like 20 different colors if you use all the colors in here you would have like really colorful and nice notes but it's probably going to be really hard to look at it and go back and see everything all in one now if you aren't using the zebra model liner i know with like some other pens they tend to smudge so some tips i like to use in avoiding the smudge because smudging can like ruin your notes basically i really like to you can sometimes like underline things and you won't get a smudge or you can wait a day or so but if you're if you don't want to you can just go underlining things or you can do boxes and other like circles or another tip i like to use is just like highlighting really fast if you go like really fast, it it like doesn't have enough time to like pick up the ink, but the Zebra Sarasa is pretty good and it doesn't smudge that much. You basically want to highlight with intention. And so when you look back, you can quickly see the important parts. So before we finish, I'm just gonna talk about like how I review my notes and like studying because for example, like all of this we learned today is helping us become better note takers and learn more information better and quicker because, for example, highlights allow you to see and come back to the important information so you can see everything. The Cornell method, as we talked about earlier, allows you to see all the questions on the side and diagrams that simplify really complicated concepts so you can like easily understand everything that's going on and like for example like here i can see like everything that's going on like really quickly and really easily i don't have to like take too much time to like go read over everything and learn a new topic basically over again but what i don't recommend when you guys are reading through your notes is just like passively just reading word for word 20 times over again to memorize them i think applying all the techniques we talked about today definitely will help you guys in the long term. So that's the end of the class. We finished a lot on time. Let me switch my camera back into the face mode so I can give a conclusion. Okay. Um, am I spotlighted? Okay. So anyway, that was the end of the class. And Thank you everyone who came. I hope you guys learned something and everything I like talk about. There's a summary page on the Zebra page. So on the Michaels and Zebra page. So you guys can like see everything we did really quickly. And there's also going to be a recording posted a bit afterwards. So you guys can rewatch it if you want to like look back at everything and see. But anyway, so that's the end of the class. You guys can like ask some questions if you want before everything is over and I can answer a few of them before we end the class. So yeah. So as she pointed out, there will be a recording and the notebook I use, I use this notebook called White Lines. It's pretty cool. And I also just use, like Michael's also has like tons of paper at their store, they have tons of different notebooks for you guys to check out too. What has motivated you to start making neat notes? I think it's because I wasn't, when I first started note taking, I was like really unmotivated and I didn't really want to take notes and studying just seemed so much work. But when you start taking neater notes and you start incorporating a lot of color, you can like, it, learning becomes fun and I guess it doesn't become so much of a chore anymore. So 
anyway, tips for taking things during fast lectures, definitely trying not to write everything down, trying to summarize things concisely and quickly. So for example, when I'm in a lecture, I definitely tend towards, I want to write down everything they say because I don't want to miss out on it. But what you really need to do is like write down only the important things that you're going to need to learn later on and not like useless information, basically. So, oh, and if you guys like, I have a lot of other YouTube videos about this in my YouTube channel. You guys can check me out at Emily Studying. I talk a lot about like note taking, making diagrams, all of the stuff we discussed today will be on there. So I think it's time to end the class. But anyway, thank you guys all for coming today and see you guys later. Bye-bye.